Hello guys, Winston here. I apologize in advance for sounding different, I'm on the road for the next two weeks so hopefully this lav mic that I'm stuck with doesn't turn out to be a complete piece of garbage. I've noticed an uptick in the number of people with Fusion 360 questions recently, so I think it's about time I start tackling some of the more common ones in the Carbide 3D community. Don't expect a full-blown intro to Fusion series anytime soon though, for now I'm just sticking to topics that are limited in scope. Today's topic is the tool library, more specifically how to program custom tools. All of the toolpaths that you generate in Fusion 360 need to have a tool assigned. Fusion 360 by default includes a couple sample tools, and while you could try and pick out one of those presets that most closely matches the end mill you're using, to do it right you really ought to program in the specific parameters for your particular end mills. And it's not that difficult, so let's go through the process of entering in an example end mill. I'm going to first open my tool library manager from the CAM toolbar. Any of your own end mills will show up in the local folder of your tool library hierarchy. As you can see, I have libraries for Carbide 3D's end mills and my eBay collection of generic end mills. Let's add a new one for this extra long 8th inch uncoated end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. They're not a sponsor, this just happens to be one of the end mills I brought home with me over Thanksgiving. I'll make my own library for it by right clicking on local and creating a new tool library. After I've named it, I'll go to the upper right corner of the window and click add mill tool. This opens up a window with a lot of tabs and fields, but the most important ones are pretty self-explanatory. First thing we have to do is select the right end mill profile. My tool is a flat end mill. The material is plain carbide. No through tool coolant, units are in inches, and two flutes. The info section is basically optional, but if you break a tool and you want to reorder it, or you want to look up recommended feeds and speeds for material, having the vendor info saved here can be pretty useful. Type in your tool diameters next, in my case the cutting head is the same diameter as the shank. And lastly for this tab, you can proportion your end mill. The whole point of having this long end mill is for that generous flute length. That way I can cut through 3 quarter inch sheets of material without the shank rubbing against the walls. This tool has no shoulder, so that field is useless, and the overall length is 2.5 inches. Body length is supposed to be tool stick out from the face of your holder or something, but at my level of machining it can be the same as overall length. As for the remaining tabs, shaft, don't care, holder, don't care, feeds and speeds, you can set some up now but you'll have to enter in new values for different materials later, post processor, you can disable coolant but it really doesn't matter. And that's it, you're done. The steps I just showed will work for most general purpose end mills. Other cutter geometries will have slightly different options like for taper mills, ball end mills, chamfer cutters, etc. But all the parameters you need are labeled pretty well so don't be afraid to just go in there and play around with them. By the way, cutters that get used in a particular project are copied to a local project library, so if you dial in your feeds and speeds for aluminum there, the values in the master library won't be modified. For those of you who are using Carbide 3D's cutters and are feeling particularly lazy, I've shared my tool library for those end mills on my website and on the Carbide 3D forums. Links in the description below, they're provided with no guarantees and the feeds and speeds are set to a boring default value. If someone wants to add in Carbide 3D's PCB tools and reshare, feel free, I don't actually have a set of those. And that's all I have for this video. If you want to take an uber deep dive into tool management, I'll have a link to a 19 minute marathon of a guide by the ever knowledgeable Lars Christensen about the subject. I want to thank you guys all very much for watching and I'll be back with more CNC videos in about two weeks. Or maybe a little sooner if I'm bored in the hotel.